All right, guys. So today I'm changing it up, and I'm gonna do a review of the Breton Walda mod for Mountain Blade, which is a very good uh, historical mod for the game that takes it and sets it in Arthurian Britain and Ireland. Elves seem fairly accurate. I obviously can't speak of any great experience, but as I said, everything looks fine. Uh, the movement systems quick and easy, you just sort of click where you want to go, uh, and you go there. There's all sorts of little information you can get from hovering over different uh, warbands around there and the different kingdoms. So the game at face value, uh, everything is easy to use, and uh, the graphics are pretty good. I mean, they're nothing compared to, you know, a, a super new next-gen console or anything. But they're certainly more than functional, and what and it certainly makes up for it by just taking all that space from graphics and putting it into something a little, you know, more into the game, more features, more things you can do. It's just uh, generally pretty good. So here I'm going through and micromanaging my party. Uh, you can do that. It'll tell you when people level up. You do the same thing for your character, but I'm going to go through this guy here and it does all sorts of skills you you could want without putting too much emphasis you know if you forgot to put a bunch of skills in writing or whatever it's not going to hurt your game and nothing nothing seems to you know anachristic or anything everything works everything's functional and there are differences between day and night which i think should come up any second now see now that it's daytime I can see everyone better, they can see me, and I'm going to have to run away and hide in a castle from these guys, because I would get creamed with how much bigger their armies are. But I'm just going to sort of jump around and show you the interesting bits, rather than having a, a true let's play. Sailed up to the coast of Britain, or possibly Scotland, I don't know where the, the modern lines would be. You know, northern Britain, southern Scotland, is, uh, my kingdom has recently declared war on one of the kingdoms around here. So this gets to show you a little bit of the other map, and it's it's not walled off, you know, at any point. You can freely travel between kingdoms and all sorts of stuff. That little pop-up you see a bit happens every once in a while. They'll give you information about, uh, just diplomatic information, you know, what kingdoms are doing, you know, what with what, if they're declaring war, if there's an incident. So here, just a quick look at the markets, you know, if weapons, armor, goods, horses, all sorts of different stuff. And then the mead halls are just, you know, sort of standard tavern RPGs. You can go hire mercenaries, blah, blah, blah. We want this much and we have this many people. And hire you. And ta-da, now I have 10 new mercenaries in my armor. Or uh, in my army, I guess I should say. And right now we are just traveling or up north, taking a little wait to boost morale by waiting in a city. And once we get to more, inter ah, more interesting bits, I will show you that. So the combat is what will really make or break a game, especially one like this, based on you know, sort of war bands and that sort of activity. So the combat, I think, is pretty good. Uh, you, the equipment is fairly accurate, as you can see here, where I've got my Saxon character. You know, the shield even has three iron bars, just as everything says. Uh, cloaks, burnies, swords and everything look accurate. Uh, most of the AI war bands will have very few missile weapons, which is, of course, accurate for the time as well. I mean, you can do whatever with yours and just hire only archers if you want. I can't imagine you doing all that well, but you get the idea. Uh, there's throwing weapons. So you hear my character's using some Franciscas. And the only complaint I really would have is spears are underused. We know spears were probably the most common battlefield weapon for the time, but uh, the AI is really stingy about using spears uh, just because in... You know, if somebody with a, you know, sword runs up to a guy with a spear, the guy with the sword wins, uh, when a formation of spears would beat a formation of swords. But the AI just isn't programmed that way, so there's not a lot of spears on the battlefield. 
And that's really the only complaint I would have about uh, the the battlefield and the combat mechanics. There's a stamina feature which I have disabled. Uh, you just have to go into your settings and change it. Stamina would arguably make it a bit more realistic, but it's also gets kind of annoying because the stamina, at least uh, at the start, is never that high. You know, even me, who as you can tell isn't in the best shape, can run around and uh, do, you know, the reenactment or LARP for a few hours, whereas your character will get tired, you know, fairly quickly. So I've just, I was never a fan of that stamina, but I mean, uh, different things and I don't remember if you'll get to see it in this battle, but weapons can break down, shields will break, swords can get stuck in opponents. So there's a lot of actually uh, really good, really accurate uh, things that happen. Uh, you know, you can, if you get a, a big hit, you'll start bleeding out, all that good stuff. Good arena setting, which I don't know if uh, an arena would exactly be accurate. You know, this sort of gladiatorial style arena probably would have broken down. But uh, gameplay-wise, it's really good because it lets you work on your skill where you just get random uh, equipment. So it forces you to actually, you know, know how to use weapons rather than just, uh, you know, having the best gear and relying on that. And you get a uh, bonus experience and a little bit of cash if you do well. And since it's just an arena setting rather than an actual battlefield, if you just mess up like I did, you don't actually suffer any damage or anything and can get back in the ring as quickly as possible. So as I said, I don't know if the arena setting would actually be that accurate, but certainly they would have had all sorts of duels and tournaments. There are tournaments I don't think I have any recorded. Uh, so this is getting closer to anachronistic, but... I mean, it's just a video game, and it certainly, from a gameplay perspective, is really fun and really good. And it's nothing, you know, so outrageous to really get your panties in a twist. Or fairly realistic, so here I'll finally get to show you some bows. You can zoom in, there's also a first-person perspective, which is pretty cool. But uh, hopefully this can show you how, just how accurate this gets. Uh, as you could have seen earlier, when I had my trusty bow and was shooting around uh, as you're moving your your accuracy isn't as good and all sorts of other fun things you can't block with some of the smaller knives which I found kind of annoying because you know theoretically you can block with knives but realistically you know if somebody swings a big sword at you most people just would rather not try to block with a knife and of course it would be a lot harder so that it's sort of a choice that does kind of annoy me, but it's nothing so outrageous that it's you could really, you know, call you just a bad choice. It's a choice you have to either agree with or disagree with. And, you know, it's it's nothing worth complaining about all that bad. And there's all sorts of little choices like that one there that'll, you know, make people view as good or make you more well known and it's just uh, very interesting the way that all the the choices come down to the way people from the period would think about it, not the way, you know, modern people would think about it. So if you go and save a lord's village, they might get mad at you for trying to, to one-up him rather than just being, oh, thanks for helping our village. It's really it's the small details that sort of make the game. The way that there's all sorts of different weapons that are accurate and behave in slightly different ways. And uh, even just random things that even aren't as, as fun as or interesting. So here I'm working as a mercenary soldier, so I just sort of follow the Lord around. But it's a quick way to, to gain experience and get new equipment and rep, get a reputation. So even if it is slightly less on the fun gameplay side, it is more fun. And I have a, a few other characters doing the same thing. So, thanks for watching, and you should definitely check out the game.